Good morning. All right, we are continuing in John today, reading chapter 9, verses 24 through 34. Let's go ahead and pray, and then we will read the scripture for the day. Heavenly Father, God, uh, thank you for your Son, Christ. Thank you for how you have instructed us concerning him in your word. Thank you for um, the mercy you've shown us so richly in providing us more than we need um, in evidence and, and, um, and just confirmation of his identity. Thank you that you give us exactly what we need when it comes to salvation. Um, and it comes to us in the name of Jesus Christ and through um, softening and changing of our hearts through the Holy Spirit to receive him as Lord and accept him as our Savior. So, um, God, today as we read your word, we pray that you would continue to soften our hearts, continue to change us more into the image of your Son, Christ. Continue this work of sanctification that you have begun in us, that we know because of your promises to us that you will complete. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and read the scripture for the day. So, for the second time, they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, Whether he's a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? And they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Why, this is an amazing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born in utter sin, and you would teach us? And they cast him out. All right, God's word to us today in the book of John. Let's make some observations, and then we will move into interpretation and application. So uh, we see that the Jewish leaders called the man who had been blind for a second time. Um, the man said that uh, what he knew that was, that is that he was blind and now he sees. He didn't know anything concerning Jesus' Jesus's sin or lack of sin. They continue to question and mock him, saying that they don't know where Jesus comes from. And the man tells them that, he, that Jesus must be from God, because if he wasn't, he could do nothing. Um, all right, so we see what um, started much earlier in John, continuing in this chapter, this mocking of Jesus and mocking of people who um, maybe don't even believe in him yet, but are just open to considering Jesus' claims. Back in 7, um, 7, 46 through 52, we see Nicodemus interacting with the other Jewish leaders. And um, I'll start in 45, and it says, The officers then came to the chief priests and Pharisees who said to them, Why did you not bring him? The officers answered, No one ever spoke like this man. Right, so it's kind of similar to the blind man's claim. Um, that this guy is unique. He's clearly different. We can see this because of the way he speaks and the way uh, the miracles he performs. Um, uh, the Pharisees answered them, Have you also been deceived? Okay, so mocking them. Have any of the authorities or the Pharisees believed in him? So again, their own authority. But this crowd that does not know the law is accursed. And then Nicodemus, who had gone to him before, to Christ before, 
and who was one of them, one of the Jewish leaders, said to them, Does our law judge a man without first giving him a hearing and learning what he does? They replied, Are you from Galilee too? Search and see that no prophet arises from Galilee. All right, so this mocking and questioning of Christ's identity, and what they're really questioning, as they do in the passage from today, is the fact that they don't know where his authority comes from, his earthly, they're looking for some kind of earthly authority, some, something they can, um, they can make sense of in the world that they've constructed. Right? They want an earthly reason for him to have authority. We don't know where he comes from. That's what their, their statement is really saying, that we don't acknowledge any authority that he has based off of his earthly status. And the same thing with Nicodemus, and that the same mocking. Are you from Galilee too? Right? And, and the way they talk to the blind man, are you, are you or his disciple, right? This dismissive, mocking tone. Um, and, and again, search and see that no prophet arises from Galilee. So we don't know, we don't acknowledge this man's heritage, his authority. Of course, they don't know everything about him. But the very interesting thing um, is that they're, they're missing the whole point, right? And it's something that the blind man <laughs> has seen as he was given his sight. He sees the truth plainly. Um, they are suppressing the truth. Whereas this blind man, his eyes are open and he sees the truth. They are actually suppressing the truth. And what's really scary for them is that they're using the name of God in an attempt to suppress the truth. When they say, give glory to God, we know that this man is a sinner. They're not really wanting this man to give glory to God. They're using the name of God to intimidate and bully this man who is healed into saying what they want him to say. And this, this is a very, very bad position for them to put themselves in. Because this is even though they're saying, give glory to God, right, which is a good thing to say, they're saying it in a way that is actually stealing glory from God. They're using the Lord's name in vain here. One of the Ten Commandments. Right? They, are, they are directly rebelling against God and trying to rob him of his glory while using his name to bash people over the head and intimidate them. This is scary, and it, it, would, it should be scary for any, anyone um, to find themselves acting in this way, manipulating the people of God with the name of God. Bad, bad, bad place for them to put themselves. Um, but even as they make this attempt to bully him, he's unmoved in his statements. He just says, well, I don't know. I don't know about his past. Again, he's not, he's not um, overstating his knowledge. He's not um, making things up that he doesn't know for sure. He just says, I don't know. I don't know whether he's a sinner. But I do know this. I was blind, and now I see. And the little bit he knows is one thing that he knows. And what it leads him to concluding overpowers their weak arguments and their bullying. You see, that's the thing about evil um, and, and its weak arguments is if you just stand up to it, it crumbles. Now, that, that doesn't mean that the evil crumbles right there and then and that they no longer have power to hurt you on earth. But their arguments fall apart, and the power of their lies falls apart as well. Um, and so you, we see that all they can do is remove him from the midst, lest the truth he's speaking contaminate more people and reveal their lies to be weak and ineffectual to others. And, and you see this all the time. People who speak the truth are removed, um, whether it be from a church situation or public um, uh, forum, um, truth speakers 
are at least uh, tried to be removed by those who are propagating lies. So um, that's what's going on here in that way. Now, what's really, really awesome to me is the way this man takes this experience with Christ, the way Christ worked in his life, and he allows God to, or I, I should say, God allows him to see some simple, um, very um, profound truths because of this miracle in his life. Um, the Pharisees, the, le the Jewish leaders are saying they don't know where Jesus comes from. Right? And again, they're talking about an earthly authority that they want to either acknowledge or deny. Um, and they're looking for confirmation and they're missing it because they're missing the bigger picture of what um, is being communicated to them, of where he comes from and who he is, has been sent by, namely God the Father, right? He's been sent from heaven. And what Jesus did in chapter 8 is he spent almost the entire chapter communicating to them and all the people in the temple where he came from, right? If, if you reread chapter 8, he's constantly, I'm the light of the world. Um, you know, if, if you know the Father, um, sorry, I do not, nothing on my own authority, but speak just as the Father taught me. He who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone. I always do the things that are pleasing. He's, he's telling them explicitly where he came from. So they, they do know. They're just unwilling to admit that they've been told or unwilling to believe where he comes from. Um, and he says, I speak what I've seen from my father. You do what you have heard from your father. Um, and then all of it builds, as we went through chapter 8, remember all of this builds up to this final statement, this I am statement. When he says, truly, truly, I say to you before Abraham was, I am am and they finally understood what he was saying to the point where they tried to stone him because of it so they they know what he's claiming what jesus is claiming um he's claiming to be god to come from heaven down to earth right this is jesus's claim there's no mistaking it so they know that what's happening here is he has just given them evidence to support his claim. He leaves that interaction. He says, I am. And then he leaves and, he's, and he performs a miracle that proves his identity. And they are unwilling to see it. This blind man sees it. Whether or not he heard everything that had been communicated in the temple, and whether or not he heard this I am statement, he has seen because of this miracle that Jesus is from God. The miracle confirms Jesus' claim and the blind man very concisely states this. After one miracle, this man sees what Jesus um, was telling the Jewish leaders and the rest of the Jews throughout all of chapter 8. And they, they, the Jewish leaders, continue to mock the truth here. So we see that it doesn't really matter what evidence an unbeliever is shown. They cannot believe. They will not believe. Whenever someone speaks the truth to someone who is antagonistic to the truth, they try to kill them or drive them out. This is what unbelievers do. It is the heart of man to suppress the truth. It takes an act of God to change that heart to be able to receive that truth. And the blind man's point, he, he states it so well, so clearly, when he says, why, this is an amazing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. Right? This would... Um, there, there are, um, and, and he's, he's saying things that are scriptural here. He's not just making stuff up. So he says that, um, we know that, that God does not listen to sinners. And so 
In Psalm 66, 18, it says, If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. Or Proverbs 28, 9, If one turns his ear, turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. All right, so this is biblically sound, a biblically sound statement this man is, is making. We know that God does not listen to sinners. But if anyone is a worshiper of God and does, does his will, God listens to him. Right? An example would be Psalm 145, 19. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. So this, this man in one sentence is making a very strong argument for how God interacts with sinners. And then he draws a very, very powerful conclusion from the miracle that was performed on him, the, the giving of his sight. And he says, Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. So what is this statement saying? It's saying that not only is God listening to this man, but he's listening to this man, Jesus, in a way that has never been seen before. This is new. This man is different. God's not just listening to him. He's really listening to him. So there's an evidence here of who this man is. And then he goes on to say, if this man were not from God, he could do nothing. And this powerful, powerful, simple argument, it's a logical line drawn through what has happened. Um, it totally demolishes the arguments, that the weak arguments that these Jewish leaders have been making. The evidence is, is there for them to see it if they're willing to look. And so what is left to them? They have no argument that can refute that. They, so they go outside of Scripture and they just mock him. They ridicule him. You were born in utter sin and you would teach us. So ridicule him, appeal to your own authority and cast him out. Get that influence out of here. We can't have that person influencing anyone, else, influencing anyone else around here. Other people might see how lost and sinful and what liars we are. Get rid of them. Get rid of him. So, powerful, powerful argument from this man about the identity of Christ, which um, was following Christ's powerful miracle confirming his identity, which was following Christ's powerful statement of his identity. Christ stated his identity, I am. Then he performs a miracle to prove his identity. And then a blind man, because of that miracle, sees, maybe not completely, but he sees the truth about Jesus and states it boldly to men who are suppressing the truth. Um, oops. Sorry. Uh, so I'd say for conclusion that the mercy that God has shown to us by sending his son Jesus and providing miraculous evidence of his identity is amazing. Even so, it takes his hand of grace, God's hand of grace in our lives to overcome our amazing drive to deny and suppress the truth and save us from our sin. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your hand of grace in our lives. Thank you that you take our rebellious, lying hearts, hearts that suppress the truth and drive out any that would dare speak truth to us. You take those hearts and you change them to hearts that are soft, hearts that can receive you and acknowledge you as Lord. This is an amazing thing. It's amazing grace. And we know because you have told us that it is nothing that we have done that brings about this change. But it is only your grace. It is through your grace alone that we are saved. And so we thank you for that. We claim nothing in our salvation but give you all the glory. God, continue to open 
our eyes to your truth. Continue to keep our hearts soft to your truth. God, we trust you in this. And God, we pray for those around us who do not have um, minds that can receive, eyes that can see, who do not have soft hearts. We pray that you would soften their hearts. And for those that do trust you, but that are, but that are still clinging to some remnant of their own glory in trying to um, take credit somehow for their salvation. Please bring them to repentance and show them their utter dependence on you, God. God, help us to truly give you glory, to truly desire your glory and not use um, statements like that as, as a bludgeon against those who disagree with us. And give us hearts that worship at your feet, that obey your word and revel in your presence that you so graciously give us through your son Christ and the immediate presence of your, the Holy Spirit in our lives. God, we are so thankful to you and we um, submit and trust you today. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day. I will see you again.